So, now we take up a few examples on projectile motion along an inclined plane. Let us see how we use the basics that we have studied in the previous video and two questions. So, here is the first example, the figure is in front of you and the question says, there is this projectile which is projected with an angle beta over an inclined plane making an angle alpha with a horizontal and we are supposed to find out the relationship between the angles alpha and beta for which this projectile will hit the inclined plane perpendicularly normal to the inclined plane. So, here as the figure shows us as the projectile hits the incline at this point it hits normally that means the velocity is all perpendicular to the inclined plane right and for this to happen we are supposed to find out the relationship between the angles alpha and beta how should the projectile be projected yes. So, what do we understand by the velocity of the projectile being perpendicular to the inclined plane? Try and understand this in terms of the axis that we have taken in the previous videos one along the incline the axis x dash and the other perpendicular to the incline the axis y dash yes. Do we see that this velocity which is absolutely perpendicular to the incline has no component along the incline? that means v along the x dash direction is 0 at this particular point is not it. So, can we use this result as a condition to find out the relationship between alpha and beta is not it so. So, we say that if the projectile has to hit the inclined plane perpendicular to it that means its velocity along the x dash axis as at the moment of hitting must be 0 and this velocity for the projectile along the x dash axis we can write down in from the equation of motion the first equation of motion itself v is equal to u plus a t along the x dash axis can we write uh, v x dash will be nothing but uh, velocity initial velocity which is u along the x dash axis which will be u cos beta because it is the angle beta that the projectile makes with the incline this component here along the x axis will be u cos beta plus acceleration along the x dash axis. Now, we have seen this already in the previous video that when g acts in the vertically downward direction on the projectile its component along the x dash direction is like this and its value comes out to be g sin alpha the perpendicular component is g cos alpha is not it along the y dash direction because this angle also comes out to be alpha. So, here in this case the acceleration along the x dash axis is actually minus g sin alpha and then into t. Now, which t are we trying to use here? It is that time at which the projectile hits the inclined plane back. So, can we use the time of flight here as the time t? At that time t the velocity along the x direction x dash direction is 0. This is our condition to be solved. And we already know from the previous video that the time of flight for such a projectile is given by 2 u sin beta by g cos alpha right. So, all we need to do is substitute this value of t in this equation and solve this equation for the relationship between alpha and beta. So, when we do that we will get u cos beta minus g sin alpha into the value of capital D which is 2 u sin beta by g cos alpha this whole expression must go to 0. So, when we try to solve this what we will get will be cos beta is equal to 2 times sin alpha sin beta by cos alpha and we can simplify this to write it as uh, 1 is equal to 2 sin alpha by cos alpha into sin beta by cos beta right. So, this gives us 1 by 2 is equal to tan alpha into tan beta. Do you see this is a relation between alpha and beta which must be satisfied if we want the projectile to hit the inclined plane normal to it. So, this is the relation that we are looking for we can give this relation many other forms maybe we can take one of the factors on the other side and we can write it as uh, tan alpha is equal to 1 by 2 tan beta in the denominator which can then be written as cot beta by 2. So, this is another form that we can give to the same relation.
okay so this is the condition for the projectile to hit the inclined plane perpendicularly this will be the answer for this particular question now let's move on to the next one the next question has this figure and the question says that there is a particle which is projected on an inclined plane with a speed u as shown in the figure find the range of the particle on the inclined plane so find r for all the values that are given here in the figure and considering the initial velocity to be u we are supposed to find out the range of the projectile which we understand from the figure is nothing but the distance o q right if we consider q as the point where the projectile hits the inclined plane once again in order to find out the range we can use the formula for time of flight which we already know it is 2 u sin beta which in this case is 30 degrees by g cos uh, alpha which in this case is also 30 degrees so g cos 30 from here we can first of all find out the time of flight see that this will come out to be 2 u into sin theta is 1 by 2 and then we have a g which is 10 and cos 30 which is root 3 by 2. So, when we simplify this we will get u by 5 root 3 as the time of flight yes. Now, once we have got the time of flight instead of uh, using the direct method of finding out the range because that will involve an acceleration also we know that along the x dash axis the projectile has an acceleration. So, we will have a complicated equation to solve that what we can do rather is go about finding the displacement of the projectile along the x axis along the horizontal axis in the same time in which the it hits the flow it hits the inclined plane understand that that displacement which we will get will be the distance op in the same time the time of flight right. So, we can first find out time of uh, the displacement op which will be the velocity initial velocity along the x direction times the time because we know that along the x axis there is no acceleration right. So, we can simply write speed into time as the displacement and what is the u x value u x will be u into cos of this total angle that the initial velocity makes with the horizontal which in this case is 30 plus 30 60 degrees times capital T right. So, we can solve this out this will be u into cos 60 which is 1 by 2 into the time of flight we have already calculated u by 5 root 3 right. So, this comes out to be u squared by 10 root 3 the distance. Now, once we have got O p see that to find out the length O q which is the range that we are looking for is quite simple we can use this right angle triangle that we have over here and we can use O p by O q is equal to cos 30 and from here we get O q is equal to O p by cos 30 and now we can substitute the value of O p from here. So, this will simply be u squared by 10 root 3 into cos 30 which is root 3 by 2 see that we will get uh, u squared by 15 because we will have a 30 down here u squared by 15 meters as our answer which we are supposed to get in terms of u itself because u was not given to us. So, the answer will come in terms of u only right. So, this is how we can get it. Uh, one more example let us look at this is the figure that we have once again a projectile hitting an inclined plane perpendicularly let us see what the question is. The question says there is a body which is projected up an incline with a speed v naught the angle of the incline is given to be beta. If the body collides the inclined plane elastically and perpendicular to it find the time after which the body passes through its point of projection again. Now, this is slightly tricky to first understand, but we will see that once we understand what the situation is the answer is quite simple. So, what is happening is we are throwing off a projectile from the point O the point of projection it goes all the way in air and hits the projectile at the point B let us call this point as the point B and it hits the inclined plane normally. Now, when it hits normally do you understand this projectile will have a tendency to rebound bounce back when it hits normally understand that it will bounce back also normally it will go back in the same direction from where it came 
and this bouncing off is elastic now uh, from collisions which is a chapter that we shall be a topic we shall be studying in the upcoming chapters when a particle collides elastically with the surface it does not lose any energy in the process of rebounding it rebounds with the same speed with which it hits the plane surface right so in this case this means that if the projectile hits the inclined plane with the speed v it will rebound with the same speed v just in the opposite direction just in the opposite direction means it will do you understand that if it rebounds back in the same direction in which it came in it will follow the same path back and will retrace its path as it reaches the point o back not just that it will take the same amount of time in reaching back to the point o from the point b as it took to come from the point o to the point b so the time that it takes to to after rebounding moving from the point b to the point o will be nothing but the time of flight of this projectile the time that it took to move from o to b in the first place so what we are supposed to find out here in this particular question is just the time of flight the usual time of flight of this projectile the only condition is that we have to uh, check for this condition when it uh, hits the project uh, hits the inclined plane normally at 90 degrees angle so that's the only condition we need to substitute there see carefully that they have not the question has not mentioned the angle that the initial velocity vector v not makes with the incline so we can assume some value for this angle let's call this angle as alpha we shall see that finally the answer that we obtain does not contain alpha because this is a quantity that we are assuming here right so we have to get our answer in terms of only beta and v not okay so this is one thing that we have to be clear with so going by the same uh, initial formula for time of flight that we have we know the time of flight is given by 2 u uh, in this case this u is v not so 2 v not sin alpha by g cos beta right and we also know the condition for which the projectile hits the inclined plane perpendicular to it we have just now obtained it in the very first example it is this half is equal to tan alpha into tan beta so we can use that here half is equal to tan alpha into tan beta although just uh, see for yourself that in that previous example the example number 1 we took this angle as alpha and this as beta but here it does not make a difference because anyway we are taking the product of the two quantities here so that expression will not change by doing those changes so what we get here now is we can just uh, you know rearrange these terms to get what we are looking for we are looking for the value of alpha in terms of beta so we'll write tan alpha is equal to 1 by 2 tan beta which we can write as cot beta by 2 right so this is how alpha is associated with beta so when we try to find out the time of flight this value in terms of only beta that means we have to eliminate alpha over here this alpha by using this particular expression this is the condition for the projectile to hit the plane normally isn't it but this expression we have in alpha whereas here we sorry this expression is in tan alpha where are whereas in the time of flight expression we have a sin alpha so we need to make some changes into this expression how do we do that we have this basic method of converting our uh, trigonometric ratios if tan alpha is given to us as any value we know that tan by definition is the opposite the perpendicular by the base right so if in this right angle triangle we consider this angle as alpha the opposite Uh, will be here and the base will be here so according to this relation that we have got tan alpha is equal to cot beta by 2 we can write cot beta as the opposite and 2 as the base only then we will get tan alpha is equal to cot beta by 2 the opposite by the base so once we have got this as cot beta and this as 2 we can find out the hypotenuse the hypotenuse will be nothing but cot squared beta Plus two squared, which is four. Hypotenuse is square root of uh, perpendicular squared plus base squared, right? So we can use that, and from this triangle now we can get the value of sine alpha. Sine alpha, by definition, is opposite, which in this case is cot beta, by the hypotenuse, which is square root of 
4 plus cot squared beta. So, what we have obtained here is the expression for sin alpha in terms of the angle beta and it is this expression that we can substitute up there and solve this. So, this gives us capital T the time of light as 2 V naught by G cos beta into sin alpha which will be cot beta by square root of 4 plus cot squared beta. This expression can be simplified a little bit as you see here uh, cot beta can be written as cos beta by sin beta. So, that one cos beta cancels out with this cos beta and we get 2 V naught by g sin beta into square root of 4 plus cot squared beta. So, this is one form in which you can answer this question, this is perfectly fine. What else you can do is maybe you can solve the square root a little further. See that square root of 4 plus cot squared beta can also be written as 4 plus cos squared beta by sin squared beta and then you can take an LCM to get 4 sin squared beta plus cos squared beta over sin squared beta everything in a square root. And now, you can add cos squared beta with 1 sin squared beta to get 1 and the remaining 3 sin squared betas will remain as it is. So, you will have 3 sin squared beta plus 1 divided by this sin squared beta will come out of the square root and you will just have a sin beta over here. So, this is the value that we can substitute instead of the square root. So, that we get 2 V naught by G sin beta into square root of 3 sin squared beta plus 1 divided by sin beta which will cancel out with the sin beta present here. So, finally, we will get 2 V naught by G into 3 sin squared beta plus 1 as the simplified expression.